The streets of downtown Aldrania shook. The remaining members of the Guastani and Narco families assaulted the pavement in steel-plated Chevy Suburbans, each with bulletproof windshields. Beside each vehicle was a single-file line of 12 marching gangsters, brandishing rapid-fire silver bullet Tommy guns. Silas, Ray, and Kevin rode in the back of the fortified SUV to the right flank. Sheriff Mills' eyes were steadily behind the steering wheel. Magdalene and the Spectre sisters emerged from a cloud of smoke. All three of the wolves towered over the newly assembled urban army. Look at what we have here. As local law enforcement, I'm giving you this one warning. Cease and desist. Ha 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 ha! I shall enjoy picking you out of my teeth. Open fire! A hail of bullets lit up the street, yet had no effect on Magdalene, who held up her paw, directing the bouncing bullets back at the shooters, who either collapsed or started running. The gigantic wolves followed the scattered vehicles. Denarco's car led a Spectre sister down a dead-end alley before turning around to face the creature. Turn on those high beams, Fredo! The headlights on all of the cars had been converted into ultraviolet bulbs, a suggestion made by Kevin from his knowledge of pre-moon history. The light burned the eyes of the Spectre sister, blinding her. The car bolted forward. The moon roof opened. A gunner emerged with a railgun, blasting off shots at the wolf's belly that had an effect due to her being weakened by the UV light. The blind Spectre sister howled in pain, knocking into a building, unable to find her assailants. Giuseppe DiNarco called over the connected line. Silas, tell that kid of yours he's a genius. The lights work like a charm. So you got one? Soon. I just have to... The blind Spectre sister's hind foot came crashing down on the Suburban, crushing it and everyone inside. The SUV with Silas, Ray, Kevin, and Mills sped away from another Spectre sister, driving so far from Main Street, they were now on the Gemini Bridge. Giuseppe! Giuseppe! I don't think he made it, Dad. Well, you heard him. The lights work, so let's light these pups up. Sheriff Mills turned on the UV high beams before going in reverse, using the rearview mirror to maneuver through the giant furry legs while concentrating the light on the front left leg until the light burned it off entirely. The SUV made a sharp right, narrowly avoiding the wolves' collapse. Bravo, Sheriff Mills! That was utterly cold-blooded! Who wants to get out there and shoot that thing into oblivion? Allow me... Silas stepped out of the car with a rocket launcher over his right shoulder. He readied his weapon, looking at his target in the scope, pressing the release button. The rocket surged forward, hitting the Spectre sister, exploding on impact. The giant wolf was now a flaming mass of fire. Silas put his fist in the air, about to howl and rejoice, when the fire itself started moving. For some unknown reason, the exploding wolf began to reform itself from the ashes, emerging from the fire as a darkened skeleton with glowing red eyes. Kevin had already gotten the door of the SUV open. Silas jumped inside. The car tore off into the night with the giant wolf skeleton galloping behind them. All right, Kevbo, I'm all ears. How in the hell is this happening? I'm sorry, Dad. I got nothing. Not what I wanted to hear. Mariah, Ray, you're up. We should open a channel with the other cars. Maybe... Half of another Suburban came flying in front of their SUV. Sheriff Mills swerved away from the mound of crushed steel. The Skull Spectre sister met up with her kin, who went unharmed this whole evening. Magdalene and the blinded Spectre sister leapt from the sky. The four giant wolves surrounded the SUV. Sheriff Mills turned on the UV high beams. Magdalene was unfazed. I am the first! I'm most powerful skinwalker, and you come at me with toys? <laughs> hey, Mags, up here. Magdalene looked skyward as Mitchell descended upon her. Jesse, in his mega wolf form, leapt off Mitchell's back like a bullet, hitting Magdalene in the snout. She flew backwards, caught herself in midair, slid on the ground, then ran at Jesse head on. When they collided, he held her jaws open with both hands. She writhed back and forth to break free, 
when the Skull Spectre sister sideswiped Jesse into a wall. He recovered in less than a second, pouncing on the Skull Spectre sister, tearing apart every bone, keeping a severed leg bone as a club. The other two Spectre sisters surrounded Jesse. He struck the blind Spectre sister first with the bone club, sending her to the ground with a cracked skull changing direction in midair to the other Spectre sister, but she was ready for him. She clinched onto the bone club with her teeth, slamming Jesse into the concrete so hard it left a crater. Yo, Lassie! The Spectre sister ran at Mitchell in full force. When the two collided, the impact sent them thousands of feet in the air. Mitchell was on top of her until she turned over, thinking she gained the upper hand before slamming into the glass dome of Aldrinia exploding upon contact. Mitchell used his giant wolf abilities to land at the crater where Jesse's body lay. Jesse, you all right, buddy? You need to get up because it's three down. One more to... The head of a sideways light post hit Mitchell, sending him through a parked van. Magdalene had the post in her mouth, tilting her head to send the jagged end into Jesse's back. She pulled it out and threw it away. This is truly insulting. How could you possibly think you could defeat me? The only thing that could kill the first skinwalker is a superior skinwalker. There are none here. Don't be so sure. Jesse could feel all the different races of wolves in his body. They howled to him in his mind. As the Pierce wolf became more faint, the Winston and Baker receded and this new howl became louder. He allowed it to overtake his mind. He got up. The hole in his chest shrunk to nothing as he grew. Lurching forward, his limbs expanded. His clawed hands turned into large paws, until finally he was a gigantic mega wolf skinwalker, towering over Magdalene. She couldn't even run before the mega wolf skinwalker sunk his claws into her back and hurled her through a line of telephone poles. He galloped, then flew in the air towards Magdalene, jaws wide, clamping on her chest. He tore out and ate her heart. Magdalene faded into steam. With blood all over his mouth, Jesse ran to find Mitchell, who was now completely naked in his human form. Dazed, he approached Jesse. Looking good. Not too shabby yourself. Jesse collapsed. The mega wolf shrank into steam. He was back as himself in his human form, curled up in the fetal position, unconscious. Back at the lab, Candace's eyes opened wide. She inhaled heavily. Looking around, she saw Dr. Humphreys. Her body had returned to its human form, but the strain was too much as she lay there lifeless. Candace found a blanket and draped it over the doctor. The red bones entered, wearing oversized lab coats. Yanni helped Laurel to a nearby chair. How are you doing, Mrs. Redbone? I'm fine. Really tired, though. You're still recovering. I can't imagine what that was like to go through. The fellas must have won then, right? They had to if you're all back to being normal. The phone at the end of the table rang, startling Candace and the Redbones as it echoed off the walls. Hello? Candace! Oh, yeah. Am I happy to hear you? What about my parents? Are they there? They're good. How did you get this number? It was listed under Dr. Humphreys. How's she doing? Not well. Is Jesse with you? Sort of. There's no easy way to say this, but Jesse's dead. You just listened to Werewolves on the Moon, Episode 11, Showdown. This audio drama was written, recorded, performed, and edited by Drew Manning. If you enjoyed it, please stay tuned to this channel. Thank you for your time, and have a great one.